My name's Chris Sayre. I'm from Des Moines, Iowa. I grew up in a relatively what I thought was a, was a normal household. Uh, Grandma picked us up every Sunday for church. Uh, I had three sisters. I'm the, the second oldest out of four. Dad was an alcoholic addict. Mom was, uh, for all intents and purposes, a saint. So it kind of became the normal to see Dad passed out drunk or, or use him with his friends. And um, Mom was the one who took care of us. It was Sunday school every Sunday. and. Um, through, the, through solid biblical teaching, you know, I came to know about Christ and what salvation was and, and realizing that, that upon acceptance of Christ, um, the next logical step was, was baptism. Um, and so at 12 years old, you know, I, I made a public statement of my faith through baptism in my, in my local church. When Dad left at 14 was kind of a pivotal moment in my life. Um, he left and I turned to drugs and alcohol, and that's kind of where my, my downward spiral started. I was angry, I was, I was bitter. Um, Dad was, you know, my, my hero. I looked up to him in some sick and twisted way. I thought what, the way that he lived his life was the way that a guy was supposed to live his life. I didn't have really any other male figures in my life to, to kind of lead me and guide me in that way. So when Dad left, it was like, Everything that I knew to be a family was was gone. I still went to church. Um, it was just kind of the normal thing to do. I just thought it was part of part of the routine. Um, but my drug use began to intensify as uh, as I got older. Um, smoking marijuana ultimately led to using pres abusing prescription medications. Kind of led to. Um, hallucinogenic drugs, which led to cocaine and, and ultimately methamphetamines. Um, by the time I was 18, I was using daily uh, in some form or another, um, just some mind-altering chemical. And by the grace of God, I made it through high school, graduated high school, um, I don't know how. Um, but even after high school, attempting college was just uh, another reason to party and use. And, I was just kind of a shell of a guy, a shell of a dude, and so, so to speak. You know, I, um, the only thing I knew was drugs and, uh, and kind of let them define me. And that's, that's not who I was at all. That's not who I was meant to be at all. I had an uncle who was, who was a minister at the time and, and kind of took me under his wing and, and kind of discipled me from afar. He lived in a different state, but he, he made it a point to be involved in my life. Uh, started taking me to summer camps. And, and even through my usage, that was one thing that I always did. I, I always went to a summer camp every summer. The pivotal moment in my life, having known the gospel and, and professing to be a believer, um, was when I found out that I was going to be a dad too. And, and that's when the kind of the, the proverbial light bulb kind of went off for me, is when I found out that I was going to be a dad. And, um, and it was time to make some changes, some, some good hard changes. And that wasn't until I was 32. God radically saved me from, uh, from the grips of my sin. Um, Anybody who knows me will, will, will know that, that I don't discount a 12-step program. I think they're great, and I think they, they work for certain people. Personally, I like to, to describe the process of my salvation and my deliverance as a, as a two-step pro, pro, two process. Um, God had to bring me to a, to a point of surrender, step one, and, and true repentance. And, uh, and through those two steps, um, I've been clean and sober over seven years now. Galatians 5.24 talks about taking the, uh, the sinful and lustful desires of your heart and nailing them to the cross and basically leaving them there. And that's, that's basically what I have to do daily. Um, it's, it's a verse that, that has gotten me through a lot, you know, just being able to take my pains, my, my sin and everything and just lay them at the feet of Jesus. And, uh, and you know, it states in that scripture, nailing them to the cross. And that's, that's ultimately what I had to do and that's, that's what I continue to do. I guess one of the biggest things that that I can say is, is there is hope, no matter what your circumstance is, no matter what what kind of sin you're you're stuck in. There, there's always hope. Um, like I said, I was an actively using addict for 18 years, and, and won't go back because because the blood of Jesus, you know, um, he's real. He's he's real in my daily walk. He's real in my my each and every day. And because I hear him, I'm, I'm able to sit here and share my story with you.